All right. Hi, everybody. Three o'clock here in Vancouver, Wednesday afternoon. Good to see you. I see some some regulars in the crowd here today. Selma's there. Karim's there, obviously. Um, Marianne, I saw you earlier. Kayo. Miguel, Bruno, so many different people. Abo, welcome. If you guys are, are new, welcome to the stream. I'm your teacher for the next hour. I'm Sean. Uh, nice to see you, and nice to see you again, as always. Um, usually, We've got Lane as our moderator, as most of you know. Lane is on holiday. He's away this week, so Mark is, is jumping in. You guys know Mark from, uh, from the earlier class, okay? So he's going to be helping out. And let's get, let's get started. If you guys have um, questions, my hair's, my hair's a, little, a little crazy there, isn't it? If you guys have questions during the class, just uh, put them in the chat and We'll get to them as, as quickly and as often as we can, okay? So yeah, put them in the chat, comments, questions, anything you like, and um, let's get rolling here. Okay, so, there I am. Okay, so today's class is on participle clauses, okay? Participle clauses, um, which some people also call participle phrases, but, um, for today's purposes, we're going to call them participle clauses, okay? Um, it's a grammar lesson, but it's, it's the kind of structure that is probably more useful in your writing, in your academic writing, although we do definitely use these uh, participle clauses in uh, speech, everyday speech, okay? Um, and what we're doing today is we're really kind of putting a bunch of previous lessons together, okay? Um, a few lessons back we talked about participles, what they are, and last lesson we talked about modifiers and, and specifically misplaced modifiers, okay? So all of this is going to kind of come in and blend in together for this lesson on um, participle clauses. Let's get started. Um, Miguel, notice my, yes, yeah, it's, it's, I guess it's, a, it's a, not quite a new haircut anymore, yeah? It's a, it's a couple, <laughs> couple weeks old, but that's fine. Um, let's get started. Okay. Ah, there she is. Okay, so what we're talking about today is this. Check out this sentence. Um, as she entered the house, she heard a familiar voice in the living room. Okay, this sentence, a complex sentence, okay, uh, two clauses. There's nothing wrong with this sentence. It's a beautiful sentence. It's a wonderful sentence. Um, but there's another way you can write this sentence, and this is what we're talking about today. Check this out. Entering the house, she heard a familiar voice in the living room. So the focus of, of the class today is how you can take a dependent clause like this, as she entered the house, and you can change it a little bit, modify it slightly, and write that. Entering the house. Okay, entering the house, she heard a familiar voice in the living room. Both of these clauses have the exact same meaning, okay? It's really just, um, we like to shorten things up a little bit in, in English. We like to save, we're busy people, so we like to save ourselves some time. <laughs> so every once in a while we, we shorten things up, we take a couple uh, words out of a sentence and, and tighten things up a bit, okay? And this is what we're talking about. So, if you look at the first sentence, you notice that in both clauses, the dependent clause and the main clause, the subject is the same. You got she, okay, and she. If you've got a complex sentence like this where the subject is the same, um, it is possible and it is quite common for us to take that conjunction at the beginning, that as or because, uh, when, while, these kinds of conjunctions at the beginning of a dependent clause and the subject and just remove them. Take that conjunction, take the subject out, and then the main verb in that dependent clause is entered. If you take that ending, that ed off, and you add an ing like I've done below, you get this beautiful, what we call a participle clause, okay? So entering the house is a participle clause. 
and this is going to be the, the, the whole focus of today's class, okay? Particularly, not just what they are, because I basically, um, I showed you what they are just now, but we're going to look at um, how to use them, what is their function, and a, a particular mistake to try to avoid when you're doing this, okay? So let's just do a little bit of a review. A few weeks ago, we were talking about participles, okay? Two, two types that we were talking about. Today, I want to remind you what those two are, but add a third in there as well, okay? So what's a participle? Well, you've got three kinds. We've already talked about present participles, which it really all that means is a verb form with, a, with an ing ending, okay? So deciding, taking, putting, this is a present participle. So when I talk about present participles today, I just mean ing, that's all, okay? As we discussed in a previous class as well, past participles, Really, that's just the third form of your verb, okay? So you've got the present, you've got the past, and then you've got that past participle, which some of you refer to as PP, um, but you can call it third form, okay? Things like decided, taken, put, depending, of course, on if it's a regular verb or an irregular verb, okay? So decided is regular, um, taken and put are irregular verbs in the third form. So we talked about that in, pre in a previous lesson, okay? But the third type of participle, which we didn't discuss, is the perfect participle, okay? So this means um, using the verb having, it's kind of putting the present and the, and the past together. So you're, you use the verb having plus the past participle, the third form. So having decided, having taken, having put. I'll move over there. Yeah, see? Having put. Okay? So, um, this is what we're talking about, participles. The main question when it comes to participle clauses, uh, students ask, is um, when do we have to use a participle clause? When do we do it? Okay? And the answer is um, you, never, you never have to. You never have to use a participle clause. Okay? Um, Mark, if you're going to put your phone next to me, that's perfectly okay. <laughs> yeah? Okay. So, participle clauses are a style choice, okay? You never have to do it, but remember that when you're learning English, when you're writing a test, when you are um, writing an essay, okay, for a class or something, you want to show your range. You want to show your ability in the English language, and the truth is, that these participle clauses are used more by um, native speakers than by English students, obviously. They're a more advanced structure. So the only reason you would want to use them is really just to, to use variety in your writing, to show your range, okay? So the participle clauses have different functions, different reasons to use them, different kind of meanings inside the participle clause. And this is what we're going to look at today, okay? So we're going to look at time relationships, reasons, results, conditions, and reduced adjective clauses. So different ways of using participle clauses to show how, how fancy you can be with your, with your sentences to, as I said, show variety and range in your sentence structure, okay? So let's look at all of the different functions of participle clauses. I am going to explain a few things for about, probably about 10 minutes or so, and then you guys are gonna get to work. I've got lots of work for you guys to do today, okay? So as I <laughs> Miguel could see Mark's forehead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mar Mark's just putting his phone <laughs> Okay, I'm going to yeah. show. Hello, guys. How hey, are you it's doing? Mark. Gonna, <laughs> we're just trying to put the class on Facebook, too. So, sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a strange. it's a little strange, but that's fine. So, yeah, he's just putting the phone down so, so uh, we can stream this kind of on, on Facebook as well, guys. <laughs> Don't worry about that. So, the functions of the, <laughs> the participle clause. Okay, and his arms, I guess you can see. Okay, so functions. 
We use participle clauses to show two actions happening at the same time. Okay, two things happening at the same time. Look at these beautiful, happy children here, okay? Holding hands, the children ran across the field. Now in this sentence, um, holding hands, that's your participle clause. Okay, so I'm using ing, right, the present participle, and I'm expressing that two things are happening at the same time. So what I mean here, what's missing, what I've reduced and removed um, is very similar to my first example, as they held hands, the children ran across the field. Okay, so these two clauses, the actions happening at the same time, again, you can reduce it if the subject is the same and you use the present participle and it means uh, that both of these actions are happening at the same, at the same time or, or very close to the same time. Okay, almost, almost the same time. Yeah? Okay. So, that's one function to show two things happening at the same time. Another function is we use participle clauses to show that one action happens after another. Okay? So, two actions, but one happens first and then the other one happens later. So, look at this guy. It says, having finished his assignment, Chris turned his attention to more important things. Okay? So in this case, in this sentence, um, I'm using the perfect participle, okay, having plus PP, yeah, to show that two things happen in sequence, first this and then this. So the long form would be like so. After he finished his assignment, Chris turned his attention to more important things. But again, we can take, um, after and he, because he and Chris, same subject, you can take after and he out, add the perfect participle, and there you go. Okay? So again, we use the perfect participle to show one action happening after another. Okay? All right. Another function is reason. Muhammad is answering, asking a question. This is a phrase. No, but the clause has to have a subject and a verb. Yeah, right. So this is, that's a good question, Muhammad, about the, about the phrase. And some people call them participle phrases as well. I would say the argument is you can call them a clause because the subject is um, implied, right? You don't see it, but it's, it's in there, okay? So let's look at another example and, and I'll explain that. Good question coming in from, uh, from Muhammad, okay? So two things happening at the same time is what we talked about before. Now this is a reason, okay? Listening to music in my bedroom, I couldn't hear the doorbell, all right? So in this case, the present participle I'm using there, and my meaning, the function, is to, to show the reason, because, okay? Because I was listening to music. Now, Muhammad, your question about it being a phrase or a clause, People will argue about it, and you can call it a phrase, and that's, and that's fine. But when we reduce it, there is still that, that subject is still kind of implied in there, okay? So that's why we can call it a, a clause. I hope that makes sense. Um, so again, in this case, the subject is the same, I and I. So you can take that out of there, shorten it down, and you can say, listening to music in my bedroom, okay? So that's reason. Now, let me show you another example of a reason. This one's a little bit different, okay? Um, having grown up in Russia, he was used to the cold, snowy weather. Having grown up in Russia. Now, in this case, I'm using, um, I'm using the perfect participle, having grown. Now, but I'm still showing the reason. I'm still saying because, right? So what's the difference between this sentence saying having grown up in Russia and listening to music? Why am I using the present participle here and the perfect participle here? Now this is an important difference, but it goes back to what I was saying about the first two functions of participle clauses, okay? And that is that we use the present participle when the cause and effect relationship 
is at the same time. So the reason and the result are happening at the same time. I have my music on, I can't hear it, so we use the ing form, present participle. In this case, I'm using um, the perfect participle to show because he grew up. We use a perfect participle to show that the cause and effect relationship, that reason and result, one happened before the other. So the, the reason happened long ago, and then the result is now, right? So he grew up in Russia, and then he became used to the cold. Okay, so that's um, a, an important difference for reason. So, so far, same time, after, reasons. Three ways to use participle clauses, and I'm going to show you three more, okay? Then, you guys are getting to work for me. All right. Condition. All right. Ah. Now, I know which one I would choose here, but let's look at this sentence. Consumed in moderation, red wine has health benefits. So, um, moderation means the one in the middle. Moderation is not, um, not too much. A little bit, okay? So consumed, in this case, would mean to, to drink, yeah? So consumed in moderation, red wine has health benefits. Obviously, if you drink too much, it's not good for you. Um, if you drink none, then you don't get the benefits of, of the red wine, okay? So the magic word that I just used is if. In this case, what I'm saying is if it is consumed in moderation, red wine has health benefits. Okay, so we use that shortened um, clause at the beginning to show a condition. All right, so what you'll notice though in this sentence is that, um, well, of course the subjects are the same, okay, but when you reduce it, you have to remember that in the condition we're using the past participle. Okay, we haven't really seen that yet. So far we've only been using present participles and perfect participles, right? Now we're using the past, that third form, and that means that we're using the passive voice, okay? Because when you're using these participle clauses, if you're using the past participle, it's a passive clause, it's a passive sentence. And this is important because the only way to write a participle clause to express a condition, an if, is if you use the passive voice. It doesn't work with the active voice, okay? Again, we're gonna do lots of practice with this, guys, so the more you use it, I think the, the, the clearer it will be, okay? Okay, so two more functions and then I'm gonna test you, yeah? Result, so we've looked at reason. We also use the participle clauses to show um, result. Now, this is, this is too bad for this guy. Um, I'm off, <laughs> I guess I'm often showing pictures of, of fighting couples. I don't know. I don't know why. It just happens, I guess. He forgot their anniversary, making her very upset. Terrible. Terrible. Nice uh, tulips, though, I guess. Those are tulips. So you'll notice that that participle clause at the end is showing the result. Yeah, but this one is very different from all of the other clauses that we've seen so far for a couple of reasons. One, all of the other clauses we saw at the beginning of the sentence, this one's coming at the end, but also because in this case, this participle, we're using the, the present participle to mean which made her very upset, but this is different because the subject of the participle clause is not the same as the subject of the main clause, okay? The word which does not mean he. I mean, he did make her upset, but the fact that he forgot the anniversary, that whole action is really what made her upset. So he forgot their anniversary is which, okay? So when you're expressing a result, it's important to see that um, the subject is not the same, okay? And how about yeah, so result, as I said, you're using, and you're using the present participle, okay. And then one more, real quick, because we've actually talked about this before in a previous class. This is just a, re a little review, 
okay? And that is to say reduced adjective clauses. In this case, students, <laughs> students studying in Sean's class are so lucky, as you can see, okay? Um, in this sentence, I have just simply reduced an adjective clause. And we've looked at this um, in previous classes, right? We said studying here instead of who study. So students who study in Sean's class are so lucky, gets shortened down to students studying in Sean's class are so lucky. Also, which we've seen before, is the passive form of that, that past participle. So White Noise is a fantastic novel written by Don DeLillo. Probably one of my favorite books, White Noise. Now in this case, written by Don DeLillo, we've shortened up which was written. So you take which, it, which was out, shorten it down, and it becomes a participle clause. <laughs> Muhammad agrees you're so lucky, yeah? <laughs> okay. So this is really, these are really the, the, the six functions, right? that we've talked about. To review, we said the um, same time, after, reason, condition, result, and reduced adjective clause, yeah? And these are just the ways that we, <laughs> you guys are funny. <laughs> these are all the ways that we use participle clauses. So let's see um, how much you, you picked up there. Okay, now it's time to get to work. So I am going to go in here. I'm gonna share something with you guys. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it down into the chat. Oops. That didn't work. Try that again. And if it doesn't work for whatever reason, I can just leave it on. I don't know if <laughs> that's strange. Okay, for now, um, how about I just leave it on the screen? And I will enlarge it so everybody can see it, okay? So, this is what we're doing. I've given you at the top of the screen, you've got the six functions of the participle clause that we've talked about, okay? Um, and below it, you've got six sentences. So, all you have to do is match a letter with a number, all right? So. If you look at the, the letters, it says uh, to reduce a relative clause, to express result, to emphasize one action happening after another. These are all the functions that we've talked about. Yeah? Um, and below, number one, it says used properly, the medication is quite safe. Um, you have to decide what is the function of used properly here. Okay? So how about this? I am going to pop off the screen. Okay, I see that I think Mark has put um, that link to the doc in the chat. You guys can click on that if you like, make a copy of it, or you can just use this screen here because I'm going to remove myself. I'm going to uh, put the music on, and um, all you have to do is match the function with the, with the correct participle clause and put your answers in the chat. And Valerie, Valerie's here admitting again that she's late. Hi, Valerie. That's okay. <laughs> I, again, I wouldn't have known that you were <laughs> late <laughs> if you hadn't just told me, and that's fine. Okay, so I'm going to disappear. I'm going to put the music on, match the function with the sentence. Okay, go for it. Good luck.
Alright everybody, good stuff, welcome back. Lots of answers coming in on the chat. Let's go over some of these together. <laughs> Alright, so lots of good stuff. Let's look at them. The first one uh, says used properly. The medication is quite safe. So looking around here, I see, uh, is it Risvana? Risvana? Uh, answered one is F. Muhammad says one is F. I think a lot of people are saying one is F. Rowan, Rowan, nice to see you, hi. Uh, says one is F, and that is correct. I would say for number one, the answer is F, a condition, meaning if it is used properly, the medication is quite safe. If you take too much, obviously not a good idea. Okay, good. All right, what about number two? Looking around the chat. What do, we, do, 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 what do we got for number two? Ah, Luciana. Luciana says two is A. So let's look at number two. Teachers trying to motivate their students may try to incorporate games in class. And Luciana, I think you are correct that that is um, indeed A. And actually, you know what? Um, let me do something here. Let me change this. I'm writing on the student copy. I want my copy. There. There we go. 
that works better for me. So we said, yeah, one was F, two was A. Okay, thank you, Luciana, for that. And oh, I see, I think Miguel answered that one too, correctly, good stuff. Um, what about number three? He tripped and dropped a glass of red wine in the living room, completely ruining it. Number three, Bruno says B, okay. Does anyone agree with Bruno on this case? Rowan does. Good. What else do we have here? Marianne says three is B as well, and I agree. You guys are correct. Good stuff. That um, number three is showing the result, right? Completely ruining the carpet, meaning which completely ruined the carpet. Good stuff. You guys are, are crushing it. You're nailing it. Good stuff. Number four says, lining up outside the auditorium, the graduates prepared to walk on stage. So what is the function of number four? Again, Luciana says D. Okay. What else do we have here? Four. Kayo is saying B, maybe, or E. I wouldn't say it's B for number four. Chase says C. Now, for number four, Che, I wouldn't say that, that number four is um, two actions or and one thing happening after another. It looks like to me, as we said before about the present participle, when we use that, we're showing um, two things happening at the same time or um, almost at the same time, like um, listening to the happy music uh, the students answered Sean's questions, right? So these are two things happening at the same time. So whoever said um, D for number four is absolutely correct. Good. Okay, what about number five? <clears throat> Having graduated from university, Sam spent the summer traveling in Europe. Oh, Yara is here. Lots of familiar faces. Cool. All right, who else, who else is here? Who, who gave me an answer for number five? Bruno says five is C, okay? Who agrees with Bruno is five C? Caio says, I think he said five is C, yep. Good, good, good. Rowan says five is C as well. Luciana says five is C. Miguel says five is C. I think you guys are correct. Let's say five is C. Right? Meaning after he graduated, Sam spent the summer traveling in Europe. Which means by process of elimination, number six, wanting to avoid the crowds, in this, in this sentence it has to be um, E. Right? This is the reason. Um, because he wanted to avoid the crowds, he left quietly through the back entrance. Maybe he's some kind of um, celebrity, it sounds like. Okay? Cool. Good job, guys. So let's let's continue with this. This is this is great. Um, so just to keep the focus on you guys, I want you to I want to maybe challenge you a little bit more. Now this was just really matching the function of the participle clauses, which is good. Now I want you to try to um, use some of them or take a take kind of a long form sentence and reduce it, shorten it down, and use a um, a participle clause. Okay. So, let's go down to part two. Part two, rewrite the sentences with a participle clause. So I have given you five sentences. And again, there's nothing wrong with these sentences. I wrote them myself. They're beautiful sentences. But I want you to reduce them. Show range, show your ability um, to make them a little bit more um, natural, maybe. Okay, so number one, it says they hoped to improve their scores, so they spent extra time at the library to prepare for the exam. So in this sentence, you have to first decide what function um, is the relationship between the two, the two clauses, okay? Are, am I expressing reason, result, condition, and so on? And then you just have to reduce it and make a participle clause, okay? So when you're doing that, you may have to um, remove some words and change things around a little bit. Okay, so let's do the first one 
together as one big happy family here, okay? I'm going to copy this and put it on online, okay? And all you have to do for this one, I think this is showing a kind of a reason, like a cause and effect type of thing. So I would say, rather than they and hoped, take that out. Say, um, hoping to improve their scores. Good. Yeah, some people are already, some people are uh, ahead of me. Yeah, right. So really the, the, one thing, <clears throat> the one thing you have to be careful of in this case is the word so, <clears throat> okay? Because the participle clause expresses um, reason, just take that word so out of there. And it becomes hoping to improve their scores, they spent extra time at the library. Good idea. Good, and I see the answers already coming in on the chat. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to get out of here, okay? I'm not going to slow you guys down. I'm going to scroll up a bit, do two down to five. You've got four sentences. Rewrite them with a participle clause. Just shorten them and make any kind of changes um, you need to. Good, okay. I'm out of here. Music's coming back on.
And we are back. Lots of stuff coming in in the chat. So many answers. This is great. Um, a lot of different answers too, which is which is cool. Okay, so let me um, let me get in here. All right. <laughs> what are you giggling about over there? <laughs> okay. Okay. It doesn't matter. Number two. <laughs> All right. So, Miguel said, having spent several years in Japan, Kayo said the same thing, I, th I think, having spent several years in Japan. Um, che, having spent several years in Japan. I think lots of people got number two correct. Um, Roanne has it, good. Muhammad nailed it. Valerie's got it. All right, Selma too, yeah. So I'm just going to um, do what you guys did here and say I'm gonna take Take the subject and that helping verb away and say, having spent, as you guys said, it's having spent several years in Japan. Aha. Now, this is the tricky bit, right? And some of you caught it and some of you missed it. If you missed it, that's okay. All right? That's why you're here. Okay? <laughs> Always look out, in this case, for that. So, because having spent several years in Japan, that means because, right? That has that, um, that reason in there. So you have to take that word so out of there, okay? So having spent several years in Japan, he was quite familiar with the culture. Awesome. Fantastic. Okay, three more. Um, number three, the road crew accidentally hit an underground electrical cable and knocked out power to the entire downtown core. Well, that's terrible. What did you guys do with number three? Now, I guess for, with number three, you do have options. I guess in this case, you could, you could look at the results, you could look at the reason. It, you, it's really up to you. Now, Marianne, um, ah, okay. Let me take this down here. Oops. Oh, yeah, right. Here we go. So you have options. I'm going to put two of them here because you've got different things coming in. This is good. Now, some of you, and I think Marianne did it, you chose to focus on the first part and, um, and turn it into kind of the, the reason, right? So, I think you said something like, um, accidentally hitting, like so. Accidentally hitting an underground electrical cable and then turn it into this. The road crew accidentally hitting an underground electrical cable, the road crew knocked out power to the entire downtown core. And that's great if you did that. Good. Um, but there are other ways to do it. Now Chateau 7, yeah, Chateau 7 did it like this, and that's good. Another way you can do it is I'm going to take this last part and I'm going to turn that into the result, okay? So, the road crew accidentally hit an underground electrical cable. Take that away, put the comma, and say, knocking out power to the entire downtown core. Now, in this case, that's focusing on the result, right? Here, this is focusing on the reason. Both sentences are 100% correct, beautiful, okay? and. Um, Mark's still talking about people being able to see my soul in there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, both of these sentences are, are great, okay? 100% correct, um, just a different focus of the participle clause, right? And again, you guys, the important thing to remember about these participle clauses is you have choice, you have so many options, you have all of these possibilities to show your, your range, okay? Good. Number four. Now, some of you, I noticed, quite a few of you, I think you said this. You took um, if and they and all of that stuff, and you went for the present participle. I saw that. Now, you can't, <laughs> I, I have to stop reading the, the chat. You guys are, are, are distracting me here. So. Yeah, giving the freedom to experiment doesn't work grammatically because as I said 
um, before in the presentation that if you want to show condition, and in number four, this is definitely the condition, right? This is if they are given. All you really need to do, it's, it's kind of an easy change. You just take that away, okay? And keep the past participle. You need that, given the freedom to experiment. Because in this case, again, if you look at it, that's passive, right? It's passive voice. So it's a first condition, first conditional in the passive voice. So you have to keep that past participle there, okay? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so Anthony, I'm looking at your answer and you're saying having freedom to experiment, children will do well. Now that's a good, it's a good attempt, but what you're saying there is you're kind of changing it. You're not saying if now, you're saying because. Because they have the freedom, they will do well if you say having, okay? If you want it to show a condition, it really has to be in the, um, the passive form with the, with the past participle. Good. Okay, so what about number five? After we packed all the boxes, we started loading them into the truck, okay? Um, now, again, I saw a couple different answers. But I think most of them were pretty much on the, on the right track or, or very similar, okay? So let me see if I can find a number six here, or a number five, rather. Yeah, so Che got us at having packed all the boxes. Um, good, 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 good. Having, ooh, Luciana went with having all the boxes, having all the boxes packed. That's pretty good. I, I might switch the order a little bit. Um, just to make it sound a little bit more natural and say having packed all the boxes we started loading them into the truck now some of you gave me a different answer which is totally fine okay 100% great all right <laughs> Chateau 7 I think and Selma and some other people said this which we haven't really discussed today um, sorry after packing all the boxes we. Okay, so after packing all the boxes, now this is something that we didn't um, discuss today, but one thing you can also do with these participle clauses is sometimes you can include that conjunction or that um, or uh, a preposition as well. Um, and I know Mark was talking about prepositions today. Okay, so you will sometimes see a conjunction or preposition followed by the participle in a clause like this, and that's great too. Now, in, in fact, if you look back at number four, you can do the same thing and say that. If given the freedom, children will do well. Okay, now in this case, you're, you're just taking the subject out, but you're leaving that conjunction if, and that's okay too. That's good, awesome. Okay, again, so many different ways of saying the same thing. Good, okay, so how about this? Um, now that we've talked about this a little bit, let's see if you can find a mistake. Let me go into the presentation. And again, if you guys have questions about that, put it in the chat and we can come back to it. Okay? Let me go down here. Whoop. And we will look at the mistake of the week. Okay? <laughs> mistake of the week. Let me put um, a sentence up here and I want you to spot the mistake so let's see who the fastest student on the internet is I'm gonna put this up here turning around quickly the door hit me in the face find the mistake I'm gonna disappear for 10 seconds and I'm gonna put the music on um, tell me what's wrong with that sentence okay I'm out of here
All right. So, some people, yeah, lots of people putting, uh, putting answers in there. This is good. Now, obviously, I think maybe a couple of you watched um, the lesson last week, right? Because um, some of you are, are saying things about modifiers, right? So, this is, this is definitely a problem with the modifier like we talked about last week. Um, but it's not a misplaced modifier. Okay, this is a little bit different. Now, the, it's hard for me to show you exactly which part of the sentence is a mistake because you could argue that the first clause, that participle clause, is a mistake. Or you could say that the main clause is a mistake. It depends how you look at it. Basically, the whole sentence is a mistake. Okay? And the problem is, yeah, with that, with that participle clause, it's not a misplaced modifier. It's something that we call a dangling modifier. Now last week we were talking about modifying clauses being too far away from the, from the thing it was modifying and that's what a misplaced modifier is, okay? But a dangling modifier is a modifier, like we talked about last week, a word or a phrase or a clause that modifies something but in the sentence it has nothing to modify, okay? So, yeah, Chateau, Chateau 7 saying it's, it's, a very, it's a very rude door, okay? A dangling modifier is not a word order problem like we saw last week. It's not as simple as that. It's a modifier with nothing to modify. So it's just hanging there with nothing to do. So what I mean by that, let's, and there's a picture of that, that rude door that you guys are talking about. Turning around quickly, the door hit me in the face. At the very beginning of this class, I talked about using participle clauses and how you have to make sure that the subject is the same in both the participle clause and the main clause, right? But in this case, turning around quickly, the door is the subject. Now, you have to ask yourself, I mean, is, is the door turning around quickly? Um, probably not, unless it's, why, well, maybe unless if it's one of those those hotel doors, I guess, that kind of spin around, right? But in this sentence, it's the, the problem is with the structure of that main clause. The door did not turn around quickly. I turned around quickly. Okay? So, hmm, question coming in from Yara. I have a problem with part three, number two. Part three of this exercise? Well, we'll get, we'll get to that, um, maybe, if, if that's what you're talking about, Yara. But, um, I'll, I'll get to your question in a, in a minute there. Just, um, talking about this, we just kind of, you have to rewrite that second sentence. And I know that a lot of, of, of you put it in the chat already. So we say, turning around quickly, I was hit. I was hit in the face by the door. Now, that participle clause, that modifier, is modifying I. So you have to really be careful that um, your participle clause and your main clause share the same subject because if, if not, it really doesn't, it doesn't work, okay? So, with that in mind, how about, yeah, we've got, we've got, uh, do we have, uh, we don't really have enough time for this. Okay, how about this? We're, we're basically um, out of time. So I'll set you up with a little thing that you can do um, on your own, okay? Now that we've talked about these participle clauses and kind of being careful of the dangling modifiers, let's go back into um, the exercise. Okay? And Gamal is saying you have a, you have a question. Yeah, you can, you can always ask a question. Just put it in the chat and we'll try to answer it, okay? Whoops. Here we go. Okay, so part three. This is something that we can um, we can get started here. So yeah, Valerie is asking, so that means the first sentence is wrong. That's right, Valerie. That first sentence was, was incorrect because it was a dangling modifier. Okay, so in part three, you've got six sentences. All you have to do is use your imagination, your, your talent, and um, add a participle clause to each of these sentences. The sentence here, I don't want you to change what I've written, only add to it. Okay, so number one is I needed a holiday. So before or after or in the middle somewhere, 
I want you to try to add a participle clause. So just, just while we have one minute or so, try to put a couple in the chat while I'm, while I'm talking about this one, and then we're going to sign off, okay guys? So I needed a holiday. Put some kind of participle clause in that sentence. And you'll notice that I've given you six sentences. So what I'd really like to see is um, six different functions of participle clauses. So if you could try to put a participle clause to show reason, to show result, condition, um, same time, after, and a reduced adjective clause, that would, that would blow my mind. That would amaze me. I would be so impressed if you could do that. All right, so we've got a couple answers coming in. One from S. Saab. Um, having worked hard, I need a holiday. Yeah, good. Good, good, good. So let me, let me put a couple of these in here. So S. Saab is saying, having worked hard, comma. Yeah, having worked hard, I needed a holiday. Good. Muhammad is saying, after getting stressed, yeah, I need a holiday. Good. Good. What else do we have? <laughs> All right, this is <laughs> Marx is having worked, what is it? For Sean as moderator for a couple weeks. For a couple weeks, I'm going to change that. I'm going to say this twice, okay? Having worked for Sean as a moderator. Twice, Mark needed a holiday, right? <laughs> Good. All right. And Valerie's saying, after having worked the entire year, I needed a holiday. These are great. These are awesome. Right. So um, what you can do, guys, is finish these up. We're going to sign off for now. That's all the time we have. Okay. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to pop out of here for a minute. Okay. And what you can do is if you want to finish those other five sentences, go for it. And um, I guess, yeah, well, how about this? You can always send them to me on, on Facebook. Put them in, uh, send them to me on Facebook in, in the group. We've got the, the group from uh, Facebook, Learn English on Facebook. Send me a message or something with your sentences and I'll take a look at them and give you some feedback, okay? And, um, and that's it, okay? That would be great if you did that. Um, good practice. So, sadly, um, having, having done all I can for the day, it's time to say goodbye. Needing to go home and see my family, I must leave you. <laughs> yeah. Given more time, I would gladly stay and teach you. But, unfortunately, that's all the participle clauses I have for today. Okay, so thanks for coming. Thanks for joining. Uh, anybody who saw us on Facebook and joined uh, the class, thanks for, for popping in, dropping by. Um, and we're here every Wednesday. Okay, so don't forget to watch Mark's class. Uh, he's got the early, the early show on Wednesday at 9 o'clock in the morning, Vancouver time. I know everybody's sad now. So many sad little emoji faces. Um, yeah, Mark's got the early show at 9 o'clock Vancouver time. I'm here at 3 o'clock every Wednesday in Vancouver uh, in, in the studio here at, at uh, CCEL. And, uh, of course, thanks to Karim, who's in there, too, helping you guys out. And uh, thanks to everybody for coming. So keep practicing. Use these participle clauses. That's the only way to really get good at it is try to use them. Make some terrible mistakes. <laughs> And don't worry about making mistakes. Just do it and then fix them. And, and that's how you learn. Okay, so use it. And uh, we'll see you here um, next time, guys. Okay, thanks for watching and um, take care.